you thought we were done. No, you didn't. I said in the last video that we are still not done. Now oh, we have some more fixing to do, but not, not much really. Alright, let's, let's, let's do the fixing. First of all, um, when you have a lot of lisp or elisp and you have a lot of parentheses, um, it's kind of difficult to keep track of them. You always have to go to the end of a function and see if you know which one lights up at the start so you know when you're really finished and that your block is properly parenthesized. Is this even a word? Um, now there's a solution for this. Um, uh, let's visit our config. Um, the solution is called rainbow delimiters. It's another one of those, you know, very, very tiny packages that don't really do much unless you really, you know, you don't notice them unless you actually get rid of them. I'm actually missing this package already, so let's just install it. I'll show you how it works. And there's not, not there's much to explain. It just makes writing Lisp, Elisp, uh, other languages much, much more easy. All we have to do is, after it's initialized, now here's up to you. If you want to enable it for only programming, so every programming um, mode, you're going to add a hook uh, to prog mode, and you're then going to enable rainbow delimiters mode. You can save it as is, and it's going to only be enabled for programming modes. I personally want to enable it globally, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, what I'm going to do is just rainbow delimiters mode as in one and another one of those. Or do I? Yes, okay. That's it. Let's save this as we load our config. You can see that these are not color coded. Why is this important? We have the blue one, or like the top level one is pretty much always blue, so I know that the last one has to be blue as well. It just saves you a bit of time. It's nothing, you know, nothing out of this world. It does save you a bit of time, and I really like it. The other thing is, um, let's kill this buffer. When I open up Emacs, I have a goal in mind. I want to access a file, most likely a file that I have recently opened. So I'm going to go and look for said file. If there only was a way for the startup screen to give me access to my most used files. There is. It's called Dashboard. And Dashboard is a very nice package. It has a lot more functionality. Uh, we are going to get back to Dashboard uh, sooner or later when we start talking about Projectile, which is a project manager. But for now, I'm going to show you the basics of, or like, uh, we'll just set up a basic Dashboard. Wait, what? Okay. Dashboard. I wanted to make a video on this earlier, but, you know, I had to, I had some bitching to do. Alright, uh, use package, and why am I even showing you this? I should just be saying like, you know, here you go, you install dashboard, and that's good. Actually, you have to, you kind of have to configure dashboard, sure t, and the configuration is as follows. You have to do a few things. One of them is, set up a hook. This package actually provides, um, a function that automatically set up, uh, sets up a startup hook, which is, you don't see this often. Now for the items, we need to set up um, some items. This is actually, this isn't actually optional, you kind of have to do it here. Um, what are we going to put in here? All I'm going to put in here is recents and the count of, I don't know, 10. And, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of up to you. And, um, I guess that's it. Actually, no. There is one more thing we need to do. Or you, this is actually completely optional. Um, but you can have a custom greeting message. So I'm going to set up something like, Hello, YouTube. Um, yeah. This is what I'm going to leave it as. Do we need to set up anything else? I don't think so. Let's save this. And let's reload. Did this really install this quickly? Okay. Ah, oh, I had it installed because I did some testing before. 
And if we close Emacs and restart it, we are going to get this. This. This is way nicer. Now the reason I like it is because once I open Emacs, I can hit. You know, I can move in here with Control N and V. But that's not the point. You can hit Tab to move between your most recent files. You can set it up to have like org mode agendas, um, projects from projectile, which is going to be something that we are going to be doing sooner or later. Um, but for now, you know, we just have our recent files in here. This is going to be adequate. Okay. One other thing that I am going to show you. This is this is even less like pitching, more just um, something that I like. I like when my Emacs shows me the time. And you don't even need to like load your config with external packages, it's perfectly capable of doing this by itself. Um, clock. Uh, it, you just need to enable it. Emacs, no, no, no. Emacs list. So, if you're European, you need to set the format to 24 hours. Well, you don't need to. Again, who am I to tell you how to live your life, right? But I prefer it. Um, if you're American or you want the AM, PM format, just skip this line. There's no need to actually put it in if you don't use it. And display time mode 1. That's it. As you can see, it shows the time. Now, why on earth it does so on this side in the default um, mode line? I really don't know. I I really don't know. It it's just weird. Well, it's it's whatever. It's actually you know it's whatever. We we will learn to live with it. Another thing that this this is actually something that I wanted to show you before. Every single time we do less than S and hit tab, we want to insert Emacs Lisp. So we have to type an Emacs Lisp every single time. We actually don't. I have recently found out how to make org snippets, and I'm going to show this on knowledge to you, and you'll be amazed. Um, this is actually going to be a list where we have to add something to a list. The list is called org structure template, because these are technically not snippets, they are templates, whatever the difference is. Um, and to this list we are going to add, um, how did you, how did I do it, oh yeah, EL, this is the one I used, so you have, um, less than EL, hit tab, you can, you know, you can use whatever, um, I think only E is taken and only L is taken, so I just use this. Now the snippet, or the template, whatever, that we are going to be inserting is, let's see if I can still do this, uh, plus, begin, source, Emacs Lisp. Now we will take a new line, set a marker here for our cursor, another new line, and just end source. Does this look right? I think it does. Let's get out of here. Um, did I forget? No, I didn't forget anything. This looks like it might actually just work. Well, I'll be. I'll be. I wouldn't be surprised if it just worked, but let's reload this. Let's see if this. Let's see if it does anything. A less than yell, hit tab, and we have our Emacs Lisp source. Perfect. I'm very happy with this outcome. But there is more. There is more that we are going to be discussing. And one of the things that I'm with, that I wish to talk about is actually um, auto completion. Uh, auto completion is important for whatever. You, know, you can have auto completion in literally anything, but let me allow before I show you how to do it. Let me explain how auto completion in Emacs works. First of all, you install a framework, a manager for other auto completion, so to speak. There is um, there is multiple ones out there. There is two that are really big and um, popular. One is called Autocomplete. That's a bit of a literate, very verbose name. The other one is called Company. Uh, I use Company myself. I tried out uh, autocomplete before. Um, it it was misbehaving for me. Now maybe maybe I'm just a brainlet. You know maybe I'm just an idiot. Maybe I couldn't set it up properly. But it was misbehaving, and I didn't I, I didn't want to fight autocompletion. I have been fighting autocompletion with Vim for years. So 
I was tired of it. So I use company and I would like to show you how to set up comp the basic company in this video. And then we are going to be, you know, as we progress through the series, we can install multiple backends for it because that's the point. Company is a package that, you know, creates these completion windows. It manages all the backends. For instance, if you if you write Python, you know, one of the backends is called Jedi, right? If you write C or C++, and you know, there's there's your complete me, which uses like Clang. Um, so let's let's set up a basic um, companies setup actually. Uh, I'll see how it, I'll show you how it works. Use package company, and let's ensure that it's installed. And we have a we actually have a choice to make. Remember earlier how I showed you how you could set up the rainbow delimiters to only work in programming modes? We can do the same thing here. You can set up a prog mode hook, but I'm going to set up a after init hook so it gets initialized after you know after Emacs is actually fully loaded. I think that's the best way. I think this is also the recommended way of setting it up. And I want global company mode. Reason being I want auto completion everywhere. I'm going to be setting up a lot of backends for this. I want this to work. So let's get out of here, let's save this and reload. Um, this heck might actually take a while. Surprise, surprise, it didn't. Um, I wonder if auto completion already works. But like some sort of auto completion. Doesn't ah oh, because we don't have comp yeah that's nope don't don't save anything no for all let's enter Emacs and on our mode line you are going to see that we now have company enabled let's go back to our um, little file here let's go to this snippet of code let's let's try writing another one use dash oh yes I think it comes with a uh, EOS is backend by default. You can cycle through those with meta NNP, by the way. And just hit enter. Or you can do something else, which I really, this is what I prefer. Let's say I forgot how to do it. Just hit tab. Now, I like using tab to complete. So this is, you know, this is basic. It is going to be using um, ELISP. It does work for ELISP and LISP out of the box, I'm pretty sure. It doesn't work for stuff like Python. It doesn't work for stuff like C, for this we actually need backends. Um, if you really, really want to, you can set it up immediately, but for like Python you need to actually install stuff using pip, and you need to install virtual environment. Um, it's a bit more work. We'll get to it, and I'm going to show you precisely how to do it. But for now, we now have auto completion that works for ELISP, but most importantly, it also works with the current buffer. So if I do something like global, I, I can't do it like this, I think. Can I do add? Wow, this, oh yeah, add hook. And like after, yeah, there is a lot of hooks. It also works with text from the current buffer. So that's nice. This is going to make our life a bit easier, I think. No, I really like company. By all means, you can check out autocomplete. It looks and feels virtually the same. It, it, I just think that company is more stable. But I might be wrong on this. Thank you for watching. This is all I could show you. And in the next episode, we are going to finally get rid of this ugly default mode line and enable some fun stuff for it. So until then, goodbye.